Although not everyone agrees entirely on the idea of mandatory vaccination, one thing certainly is clear. The size of the equine industry in Australia means Hendra is still a formidable force with potential to make its mark in a very sinister way. The equine industry in Australia is enormously diverse and enormous. In Queensland, I think this figure is something like 30,000 people uh, rely on the racing industry for their bread and butter. It's followed by eventing and the leisure industry, which is also massive. Where you run an event with horses, you have the potential to amplify the impact of a disease. A big outbreak of Hendra is really going to be an, an isolated incident, if you like, affecting large numbers of horses. So at a show, at an event, at a race meeting. One horse comes along to an event, some of equestrian events have 700 to 1,000 horses at them over the course of, of you know, a small number of days over a weekend. And so if a sick horse comes along to that event, then we find that, you know, that that is the ideal opportunity to have a high impact amplification. Because there is such clear danger to those of us who travel to and participate in horse events, it's important to understand how a serious outbreak might unfold, who would be affected, and the damage radius in human and equine terms. Say we had a big show with 700 horses. We have a, um, a steward's horse that's being kept out, perfectly healthy horse. So after three days, the horse becomes sick and, um, and then we start to become concerned because for the past three days, he could have been shedding the virus. When we see that case, a veterinarian is gonna, if they're on the grounds, we'll try and make a diagnosis. And to confirm it, it's gonna take time. Everybody who's possibly handled that horse, they may have been exposed to Hendra virus. Every horse that has come into contact. I would suspect there'll be at least a 24 hour, maybe, maybe even longer, 48 hour uh, shutdown uh, until a diagnosis is confirmed. We then have a quarantine period when a horse is identified with the virus. Then the government biosecurity and quarantine people are going to step in and they're going to assess the risk of spread of the disease until they can rule out which ones are exposed and which ones haven't been. We've had instances of um, quarantine periods lasting around a, a month. So we're talking a huge expense, not only for government, but for people as well. The, the impact of Hendra is not going to be dispersed a little bit like the equine influenza impact was. You know, everyone's sharing the pain and the government coming along and, and providing some assistance payments and stuff to keep th things afloat. The, the, the impact of Hendra will be focused and it will be intense and it will be devastating. Worst case scenario, some horses and people are actually dying. So it's an, an enormous impact. It's terrifying to think of. Now, heaven forbid we haven't had an outbreak at an event yet, but I think it's a matter of time and luck rather than a good management per se. It's very difficult early on clinically to be sure that you're dealing with a Hendra horse. So vets have had to take an awful lot of widespread precaution even when horses are not contracting Hendra virus. But if, if we have an event where only vaccinated horses attend, it's, it's almost impossible for us to get a, an, an outbreak of Hendra virus at that event.